And I went to Mark 4, 21 through 25. And that says, and he said unto them, is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on the candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto him, Take heed what you hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath to him shall be given. And he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath. So it's basically saying, be careful and attentive to how you hear. Not that you do hear, but how you hear it. And then how you hear it and respond to it will in, um, induce a reaction. So as I hear it and I apply it, then God can give me more. So what is God is really saying is, I want to give more to you, but you're stuck at the infant stage. Because you haven't heard what you needed to hear in the infant stage. And so you have it grown to the maturity that you need in order to receive more from the Lord. And why is this important? It's because at this day and time, if we don't grow, we become an impairment to the people around us because we have to be the light. And see, evil in the world has increased, which means we have to bump up what we're doing. We can't do the same thing we've been doing 20 years ago and hope that we make it. You see what I'm saying? So if God has given us instruction, then we have to hear the instruction and apply it. We can't push it aside. We can't close our ears. We can't be apathetic about it and unconcerned and, and just not and just cause it to go by the wayside. Because you have to understand that the word of God is your lifeline. It's not something that's just spoken to be spoken. I had a good time and I went home. But it's your lifeline, your protection, your guidance is in the word of God. And so if I don't apply it, then I I don't have the protection that I need in order to have victory over the enemy. And so God doesn't want us to live defeated lives. He wants us to live victorious lives. And we can't live victorious lives if we don't apply the word of God. Hallelujah. So he gave me a couple examples. He said the Pharisees, if you think about the Pharisees in the Bible, all right, they supposedly were waiting for Jesus to arrive on the scene. Okay. But at some point in their mind, they had their traditions so wrapped up that when Jesus came to actually bring the deliverance, they criticized the deliverance because they could only see the culture and they couldn't see Jesus. So they didn't have an understanding of the purpose and plan of the kingdom of God. They only had the understanding of what they would do to look good in front of everybody else. But we have to come to the understanding that the actions that we do to look good in front of everybody does not get me into heaven because the kingdom of God is the rule of God in my heart, not in my not in my flesh, not in me going to church on Sunday, not in me doing my ritual during the week. It's not a ritual. It's relationship with the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the Pharisees were so immersed in their spiritual traditions, they missed the mission of Jesus. And they became critical of Jesus when they should have been embraced his teaching. And they were unable to hear. So they, they saw him and they became critical. And when you're talking about apathy, they're unconcerned. They didn't even uh, take a moment to say, okay, I need, even if I'm feeling some type of way about what I'm hearing, I need to go back and think about this and see what I need to apply. They dismissed it completely and went back to what they were doing. And so God is saying, don't dismiss what I speak to you. Don't dismiss what you what are coming forth each week for the, from the word of God. Because you have to understand that the growth that you need to experience in your spiritual life will only come by obedience. So if I don't obey, then I bring sin into my heart and sin equates to death spiritual death which means i don't grow so when we should be around we should be fostering other people when we should be teaching others around us we're still receiving the milk from the spirit of god because we have not taken heed to the word and applied the word to our lives 
So God is, is saying from his spirit, I need you to listen up now. I need you to listen with your spiritual ears, not just your physical ears, not just your eyes. Get out of your mind how the service is supposed to go, how my week is supposed to go, how my prayer time is supposed to go, how my tradition is supposed to go, what I'm supposed to wear, what I'm supposed to say, what are my phrases. Get it out of your mind and get into the spirit of the Lord. For God is calling and he's ready to move in our midst. But God is saying that you have to come out of your mindset that you can move on our behalf hallelujah glory to god and then he brought to my mind king saul king saul was picked as the first king of israel suppose anointed by god but at some point he started to go his way he didn't listen to the prophet samuel and what ended up happening is god's anointing left him to lead the people and he was unaware he wasn't aware that anything had occurred because he was so stuck into what he was doing that he could not hear what God was saying. And so he went into his own mind, his own logic, his own reasoning, and ended up leading the people astray because he wasn't following what God was saying. And so God is saying now we have to be sensitive to God's word. And we have to hear with spiritual ears. We can't be apathetic. We can, and, and you know what? The Lord was showing me. He said, in the, in the earth, there's a spirit of apathy. It's a spirit of apathy. And that spirit of apathy goes along with that religious spirit. And so it's when I'm doing all the things outside that appear right, but my heart is far from the Lord. Because I can't keep in relationship with the Lord and walk around with hate and unforgiveness, not loving others. I can't be really talking to the Lord and he don't deal with my heart. Oh, Lord. Okay, I got to sit down. Well, bless the Lord. So I have to understand if I'm really connected to God, if I'm really listening to God, if I'm really hearing God and I'm really having my devotions with the Lord every day of my, of my life, then I have to examine, am I really hearing the Lord if nothing is changing in my spirit? Because it's a moving thing. I don't get stalemated. Something is always happening in the spirit. Something is always happening in my mind. God is always teaching me something. God God is always is preparing me for something. So if I don't feel like nothing is going on, then that's when I got to go to the Lord and say, Lord, what's wrong? God, show me. I got to turn over my plate and say, God, I might be a little apathetic about what you're saying to me. So, Lord, I got to get it together. I got to go before the Lord. It's, this is an emergency situation. I got to shut things down. I got to get before the Lord. I got to hear something. And then if I can't hear anything from the Lord, I got to call somebody and say, I need you to agree with me. I need you to pray with me. I need you to, 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 to fast with me because something's got to happen. I can't get stuck here. I can't be nonchalant about my spiritual life. I can't dismiss it. I can't be in a state where I'm not doing anything. I got to be doing something because the enemy is moving, so I got to be moving too. I got to stay two steps ahead of him. I got to be able to defeat him. I got to have the victory of the word in my heart so that I can live victorious in my life. I got to do something. I got to get up. I got to shake myself loose from whatever is on me so that I can walk in victory in my life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So God is saying, guard your heart, guard it, guard your heart, guard your heart, guard your heart from the things around you and the circumstances and from being apathetic so that you don't fall in the place where you, God is moving and you miss Jesus because you weren't paying attention and you won't alert. But let's hear from the Lord. Let's hear with spiritual ears that God can get the glory out of our lives. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. 16, we're going to start Matthew 16, 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I am? The Son of Man, the Son of Man am. And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, some Jeremiah, and or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah, 
for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but the, my Father which is in heaven. And uh, let me, uh, my professor in college said I go on the rat, rabbit path sometimes, so let me go off uh, a little bit right now. Uh, Peter was the, was the guy that would stand up and uh, say things. And uh, let me share with you right now, that's what God wants more of in the church, because the church has been silent for too long. We've been sitting back, being led by the world. It's time for us to be the leaders that God has called us to be. Okay, but uh, my text, God is asking of you and I, who do you say that I am? And secondary, uh, if, that, if that's too far out for you, who am I to you? Okay? In the book of Genesis, God, God, the Bible talks about God creating the heaven and the earth. In the book of Genesis, we start out, God's the creator. That's who you can say is to you. And if you would, if you would uh, do this for me, raise your left hand, left arm out like so. Touch your shoulder. Go down to your elbow. Go down to your wrist. Wiggle your fingers. And this is how this is how I see God with, with that left arm. He's the architect and the graphic artist. He he made this left arm, the shoulder, elbow, wrist. And the fingers, he made it all. But uh, and, and if man made it, man would have to go to the blueprint. And God doesn't have to go, go to the blueprint. And I'm glad you asked me why. Okay, the reason God doesn't have to go to the blueprint is because the Bible says I was made in his image and his likeness. Therefore, therefore he is the blueprint. Okay, all right, then let's... Uh you have to allow God to come in and do it and, and just open up. Apostle is always telling us, be open. It's so easy to be open. Just yield. That's all you got to do is just yield. There's nothing wrong with yield. There's nothing wrong with crying. They saying men don't cry. I, I, I'm a man. I cry. Y'all already know I, 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 I will cry like a baby. If God is good to me, just yield to him. It's, 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 it's a wonderful feeling. It's just, you can't explain God. It's just allow God, just depend on God. He would never steer you wrong. He would never, I don't know me, he would never steer you wrong, y'all. Never, never. You think he might, your friends might steer you wrong. But he's the one who would never steer you wrong. He created us. Created us. Like Brother Jimmy said, he created us. He gave the activity of our limbs, the movement. What about my mouth, God also said, back in Matthew, I think I shared last time, that if we're going to do this thing right, we're going to love God, we're going to be Christians as we should be. He said, we sh he said that we should be wise. And you can find this in Matthew 7, 24. And he's sharing the story about the two builders. One who chose to look at God's word just for you. And with God's word making all these great things. Even though they may not be fun, it's not fun when you're going through and God is trying to turn you around and, and stuff just happens. Matter of fact, it can be painful at times. But it shares with us if we choose to build our lives on the word of God as our foundation, as to what we go to when we're making everyday decisions, then our house this temple that God lives in will stand when storms comes. But what happens a lot of times, just being real, we want to walk in the spirit all the time, but we don't always do. Sometimes we just walk in what we think and what we believe and what's going on around us. So that's like us doing like the other guy. Now our foundation, instead of being the rock, the word of God, is sand. And when we get in those situations, where we really need God's help, we're just going to fall because we, we, 
We done left where we should be. Trying to make it important to you that we do, because God's word is for us and for you and me. We hear it. We read it. And we follow it and obey it. It is the solid foundation that will help us as we walk through life down here. And that's what I came to share. Praise the Lord.